Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at the Fargate follow along. If you have yet to do the ECS and Elastic Beanstalk follow along, you have to do those ones first. And the reason why is that this is all dependent on a, a Docker image that we created in the Elastic Beanstalk follow along. And it's good to do this ECS one first so that you get a difference between ECS and Fargate. So, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. And once you have this Docker image, you can proceed forward here. So for this one, what we're going to do is make our way over to ECS uh, because that's where Fargate is. Sometimes AWS calls it ECS Fargate. Sometimes it's just called Fargate. All right. Um, but anyway, Fargate is ECS. Uh, we'll go over to clusters. We're going to create a new cluster and we're going to choose networking only because AWS is going to manage the EC2 instances for us, so we don't have the same kind of options as we would here with the other ones. If you were to go here and choose an empty cluster, that is basically a Fargate cluster. But I'm going to go back here and choose networking only, which is the default. And we're going to name this cluster. I'm going to call it my Fargate cluster. Fargate cluster. We are not going to create a VPC. We're going to use the default one here. We're going to hit create. And it creates it right away because it's serverless. It's super fast. But there's, and there's no server running as of yet, so that's why it's super fast. We need to create a task definition. We created one before for study sync uh, for ECS. And this time we're going to make one for Fargate. And we're going to name it study sync. And I'm going to put an F on the end. That's just my convention for distinguishing um, uh, those tasks here. We're going to choose the ECS task uh, uh, execution role. If we had not had this here, I feel like it would have would make it for us. We have the network mode, which is AWS VPC. Um, I was on AWS support, and I was not aware of this uh, until um, I talked to the support engineer. And I guess this is the default. And the way it works is that whatever port you set is what's is what mapping you're going to get. And I'll explain that in a moment when we get to adding our container. We're going to choose our task memory size, and we're going to choose our v uh, CPU. I noticed that like I can't go up here, so there are some restrictions as to what you can do. Uh, a quarter of a uh, virtual CPU is well enough for this example. Node.js does not require a lot of memory or, mem or, or CPU power. At least our use case doesn't. We'll go ahead and add a container. We're going to need the ECR image here. I'm going to hit copy. And look here. It says that we can put colon tag. So in the, in the ECS follow along, I had uh, colon latest, which I'm really sure that we can do. Um, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working for me. Maybe I had a spelling mistake. Maybe there was something off there. But it definitely seems like I can go in here and use this one where it has colon latest. But uh, I just don't want to have any problems, so I'm going to leave that out there. We're going to name this container. I'm going to call it um, my Fargate container. Okay, not, not really original there. We'll just select 128. It's less than we used in the ECS one, but it's totally fine. And notice we don't have a host mapping. So this is what I was talking about, this AWS VPC thing. So our host port is going to be 8080. We don't have a choice uh, in the matter. That's all we get. We're going to scroll down. We're going to make our way over to the environment variables. I'm going to set one for um, port and will be 8080. And then we'll set one on node ENV uh, production. Now, I guess if we want to run this on port 80, I could change this to 80. Um, but the thing is, like, if you've ever ran, if you ever set up a server, anytime you run port 80 on Amazon Linux 2 or whatever, it throws errors. You got to make sure it's pseudo. It's a big pain. So we're just not going to do it. But for a production environment, you'd, you'd want set 80, or we'd have to. Um, we'd have to uh, find another way around this, like doing a proxy a container, which I'll talk about later uh, in this follow along here. We don't need to fill out anything else in here. There's a lot of options here, not even worth discussing. And we're going to hit add. You can see it's only utilizing this amount of the actual container. I'm going to scroll on down here all the way to the bottom. We're going to hit create, and it creates super, super fast. We're going to view that task definition. Um, and we don't need, really need to do anything here, but we'll make our way over to the clusters. And we have my Fargate cluster, and it should say one service running. It probably is just starting, uh, get, uh, starting, uh, it's getting going. So we'll click into it here. And we should see a service. Oh, no, we, we won't because we just created a task definition. We actually haven't launched the service yet. So we'll hit create. We will choose the F1. We'll choose Fargate. Um, it's one. We don't have anything else. We have my Fargate cluster. I name this my Fargate service. I ran into an error 
um, uh, where I named this my service, which was what we named the ECS one, and then it aired out on me, which was weird because it didn't exist anymore. So you may have to fiddle with the name here. Um, so I'm just changing it just so I avoid that issue. We only want one task to be running. We're gonna leave it as rolling deploys, and we'll go next. And then we have to choose the cluster VPC and subnet, which when you think of like serverless containers, you think you would have to choose anything. But we're gonna go ahead here and choose VPC. We're gonna choose the first subnet. We're gonna scroll all the way down. We're not gonna choose a load balancer. We would just wanna save money, not have any complications. But for a production environment, you definitely would wanna set a load balancer. We'll go all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna hit next. We're not gonna use auto scaling group, but for production, I would absolutely do that. There's no additional cost there, so it's easy. Um, and then we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom. We get a nice review and we'll hit create. And this is super fast, way faster than ECS. Well, actually I shouldn't say that. ECS is faster because it doesn't have to start you up an EC2 instance. So this looks like it's fast, but when you go here, you're gonna notice that it's provisioning. So it's actually not running as of yet. So ECS is way, way faster for getting your tasks running. So that is one trade-off you have to consider. Now, while this is getting started, um, we can see we have this public IP. It's, it's impending or provisioning. So if we go here, we're not gonna get anything. And also it's not gonna work because it's running on port 8080. So we're gonna need to expose that port. There is a security group attached to this cluster or this task or service or something. Um, security groups are around tasks. So we should click into the task. Yeah, there it is. And so we'll click into this. And um, we will go into inbound rules. We will edit a rule and we are going to add a new rule, 8080, for everybody in the internet. We'll hit save and then we'll go back and we'll check, uh, check on our uh, service here and see if, if it's warmed up. And so it's active. We'll click into it. We'll go to tasks. Uh, we'll click into the task. We will copy the public IP address. We will paste it in here and we'll do 8080. And does it work? Nothing as of yet. Oh, it still says pending here. Okay. But we don't have any errors. Let me go back here. Pending. I'm just trying to make sure that it's not stopping and starting. If there was a configuration issue, it would stop and start, but it also would tell us the error somewhere in here. It might be in here or in the logs. Um, but we're not seeing any issues yet. So I think we just have to wait a little while. It's just still warming up. So what I'm gonna do is just stop the video here and when it is running, I'm gonna come back or if there's an error, we'll talk about it. Okay, and we're back here. It's moved to activating uh, state and it says it's running. I was looking up to see what would happen if it was in a pending state. And I could say that the Docker daemon is unresponsive, the Docker image is large, the ECS container agent lost connectivity, the ECS container agent takes uh, a, a long time to stop the existing task but we're actually not having any problems. It was just me uh, thinking that there was more of a problem there than, the, uh, than there actually was. Because if we go here and copy this IP address and then do 8080, it works. So what if we wanted this not to be 88, just port 80, which would be nothing on here on the end. What we would need to do is either we would need to um, start like in our environment variable, set it so that it's port 80. And, um, but then we might have to set sudo it's a big pain to get port 80 running for web apps. Uh, and so I just didn't want to go through that hassle. Another thing you could do is you could have a, uh, you could run multiple containers and one container could be Nginx and Nginx could be used as a proxy where you change port 8080 to port 80. So that's something that you could use uh, an Nginx container for. And that'd be a great strategy if you really have a bunch of, um, um, uh, containers and then you want to then have more flexibility on it their mapping but I just want to show you how the uh, like that it is hard-coded to um, port 80 there so I'm gonna go back to that task definition I'm gonna go into here study uh, sync F F1 we'll go to the JSON and you can see here it says 8080 all right and we didn't set that that's just what it is hard-coded into here um, but we're done with this uh, service so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and delete it and uh, we will type delete me. I, we don't have to do this because we never set up any service discovery with it. That would be for like app mesh, which I'm not really familiar with. Maybe that would show up in the AWS advanced um, networking certification and we will hit delete. Uh, and that is Fargate. Now we can go ahead and delete this cluster. It's not gonna do anything because it's, um, it's not running EC2 instance, it's not costing us money, but let's just 
delete it because it's a good habit to do so. And there you go. So um, that should be deleted now. Yeah, it's still showing up. Deleting. Okay. Sometimes you got to do it twice. Anyway, um, that's the Fargate fall along, and we're all done.